Last year, a competition was created to test the nation's best bladesmiths. Thousands responded. And this year, craftsmen from all over the country and all walks of life have come forward for their chance to claim the title. I'm going to be the next Forge and Fire champion. I want to win! It would be a life-changing moment. Welcome to the Forge. Now the Forge returns with challenges unlike anything ever seen before. You'll be using this. Skill and ingenuity will be pushed to the limit. Some will rise to the challenge, some will fall. But only the best will be crowned Forged in Fire champions and take home $10,000. My name is Aaron. I've been bladesmithing for 20 years. I'm self-taught. I really, I just enjoy the whole process of bladesmithing. My name is Kevin Klein. I've been making blades for about four years now. It's a kind of freedom. I hate getting up in the morning and going and working for someone else. I'm Bert Foster. I've been a knife maker for 14 years. Probably make between two and 400 knives a year. I still am fascinated by the process of completely transforming a raw material into something different. My name's Chad Osborne. I'm a farrier. I shoe horses for six months out of the year. The other six months, I forge blades. Bladesmiths, welcome to the forge. You are here to engage in three rounds of competition specifically designed to test every aspect of your edged weapon making capabilities. After each round, you will hand your work over to our panel of expert judges. American Bladesmith Society Master Smith, Jay Nielsen. Historic Weapons Recreation Specialist, David Baker. Internationally known edged and impact weapon specialist, Doug Markaita. Ultimately, they will decide which of you is the Forged and Fire champion and walks out of here with a check for 10 grand. In this first round, you will be making a blade of your own choosing, using the carbon steel on your anvil as well as wrought iron. Oh, shit. I've never worked with that material ever before. Wrought iron is hard to make a blade because the carbon content is so low, you can never get a hard enough blade. You cut a couple things, and your edge is going to roll. You will have to combine the wrought iron, which, because of its low carbon content, cannot be hardened with that carbon steel to create a fully functioning blade. The blades themselves must fall within the following size parameters. The length of the blade, not including the tang, must be between 12 and 16 inches. The overall length of the blade must not exceed 22 inches. In round two, your blades will be tested against paint cans and rolled to Tommy Mats. You will have 15 minutes to work on your design. You will have three hours to forge your blades. Good luck, bladesmiths. Your time starts now. My signature blade is a hunter-style knife. I definitely take the hunter knife to a new level, making it utilitarian but sculptural. It's an art piece. It's not just a knife. What I'm going to make is a pirate-style camp knife. It's going to have a built-in integral handguard. I've never made this type of handle before, but I think it's going to pay off, because I'm hoping the judges have never seen something like this. I am making what I would call a camp knife. I love working with pattern welded steel. I love the process of making it. There's a lot of opportunity for the ability to make a beautiful object. I want to make a recurved camp knife because it's going to be long, and it's going to be fast, and it's going to cut great. My style is clean, visually flawless, but still high performance in a way that a person wants to use it. They can do anything they want with that knife. Blade Smith, your design window is now closed. Your three-hour forge time starts now. It's walking over. Right. Yep. First thing I'm thinking is, what piece am I going to use? Some of it might be hollow, and so we're looking for a solid piece, and some of the guys have the same idea. How many pieces did you want? Let's go boom, boom. Taking turns, cutting it. It's amazing to see these three guys working together to all get the same material. You cut this. Like the smell of burning paint. Yeah. It's definitely a first. Yeah. Fire. Watch your eyes. I see that everybody's cutting their rolled iron. And I figured while they're cutting, I'm going to go ahead and start a flat billet for all my iron to sit on top of. 
Not only do they got to forge out the carbon steel, they got to forge out the no carbon as well. That's the interesting part of this challenge. I picked one of the thicker pieces of wrought iron. I know the guys wanted to all get the steel and do it together, but whatever I do, it's always different. That's all I wanted. All right. I'm going to have to make a three-layer billet. Hot steel. A sand my billet. It's like a bologna sandwich. The bologna is the high carbon steel. The bread is soft steel. And, and that's what sand my is. Bird is having no problems moving metal right now. Now. Inside my own head, I have an artist and I have a, a worker. If you have that little psychotic dynamic in your head, it sort of works. Move. I'm a little bit psychotic. My wife would say so. Rather than just tack welding these three pieces together, I know it's worth the extra time to weld all the way around both seams so that oxygen's not going to contaminate that weld. 30 minutes has elapsed. You have two and a half hours remaining. The clock is ticking, and you, you want so badly just to get it out of there and get working and do something, and you can't, because it's got to be hot. <laughs> as far as I know, Kevin hasn't set a weld at this point. I am focusing more on the pattern that I'm trying to put into the seal. He's still preparing. Apparently, he's got 13 layers of steel to set his sand mine. What? I'm assuming he's not a superstitious guy. I want to see how many layers I can get in the metal. So I decided to take my high carbon steel that I was using for my core, cut it in half, take my laminated layers, cut them into four pieces. He's got a stack of six more pieces of metal. Now I've got a billet that's 49 layers. I don't think anyone else here is going to do that. So maybe it'll help me stand out a little bit. I'm more worried than impressed right now. Maybe I can be more worried than I am, but you know, you can only move metal so quickly. I get all the builds together. Oh, yeah. I flux it, get it forged, set the weld on the power hammer. For not ever trying to do the masks before. You want to sand my ink? Just like a recipe. Soft, soft, hard. It worked perfect. I'm drawing out the handle. Man. Giving me a little trouble. It's sucking up all my time. But I hope the judges like it. Oh, look, look. He's going to split it and forge weld it on. We don't see a lot of integral guards, which is really neat. Ooh. Oh, God. It's starting to break in certain spots. If I don't get this handle done right, I could be going home. Oh. Here comes Bert. Wow, that's hot. That's that excess flux coming off. So that's a good sign. After I draw the bar out to nearly its finished length, cut about a half an inch off the end because I want to put it on my anvil and just forge on it with my hammer to try to split those layers apart. When I can't do that, I know I've got a good solid weld. I'm pretty excited because I realize the one thing that can really go wrong here hasn't gone wrong, and I'm still doing good. Groovy! Blade Smiths! You have 90 minutes remaining. Oh. When I started welding, I had my layer set up and was feeling really good about it. And then my first weld, it just blew apart. It opened up, didn't it? Wow. I can't get this weld, man. Well, if you need to get it harder. Put more flux on it, and more weld, and more flux, and all right, God. You can flux it till the cows come home. If it's a problem, you got to fix it. Well, yeah, this one. It's not welded yet? No. Nope. I don't see being able to finish a knife from what I have. Blade Smiths, you have one hour remaining. Oh, damn. The steel is just not sticking together. Feeling for the guy, I really am. He's still in the game, so he needs to let go and finish his challenge. I feel like I can't make my blade. It's just not here. What's going on, brother? Not really much I can turn in. That mask is did. Keep working, bro. You never know what's going on with somebody else's blade. You never know. Well, I'm kind of looking at him like he's crazy. But I'm certainly not a quitter, so I'm going to finish this. All right, Aaron's back in front of the sword. I love it when people don't give up. All right. 
I will get something to present. I've got this. <laughs> Looking like a knife yet, so we'll see how it goes. Honestly, I don't know that there's any way he could know what the center of that blade is going to be. For getting to the point where I have a hardened blade, it won't be as pretty, but it'll be functional, I think. Once I have the shape of the knife I want, it's so hot I can't hold it, but I can't wait for it to cool down. So I just grab it with a couple of pairs of vice grips and start grinding it. I'm making a full tang knife, and I need to put holes in the tang because if the tang hardens, I'll never be able to get that drill bit through the hole. 15 minutes, Blade Smiths. Here we go. Aaron's in the oil. He had me really concerned that he wasn't even gonna get to this point, and he's coming back. Bert's in. Kevin's in the oil. I quenched my blade. Things look good to me. I think Chad's going for the traumatic finish. Come on, Chad. Quench, 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 quench. Here we go. Ooh, they're in oh the oil. Oh, my god. Wait back oh, don't the stir board. the oil. Don't, don't stir it. Okay. One minute, Blade Smith. Come you on. have one minute remaining. There he goes. He's in. Oh, thank goodness. Stick my blade in the oil. I quench it. I don't hear anything. Then I pull my blade out of oil. Ooh, whammy. It's got a pretty severe bend in there. Some of our Smiths would quench earlier. They can deal with these little wiggles. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bladesmith, stop working. Your forging window is now closed. That was intense. I'm happy. The knife is done. <laughs> it's kind of straight. I hope I got it there. Bladesmiths, in this first round of competition, we asked you to take high carbon steel and wrought iron, which cannot be hardened, and combine them into a signature blade of your own design. Chad, it's time to present your blade to the judges. Overall cool concept, like the look of it. You did that last minute quench and you got a, a heck of a warp. Very ambitious to put the Integral Guard in a first round challenge. It's the first of its kind that we've seen. It's got that on guard with a B guard, want to fight with it. Very nice. Thank you. Bert, please present your blade to the judges. I love the design. It looked like you had a plan from beginning to end. Glad it looked like that from your side. <laughs> Watching you work, it was like a master craftsman doing a great, beautiful painting. Kevin, please present your blade to the judges. Well, Kevin, you did a cut and stack given us multiple layers and a pattern weld. A couple issues here to work on, but a bold plan. Thank you. With that pattern moving through there, how much hardened steel do we have on that edge? Because we all know a knife that won't hold its edge is, is a paperweight. Aaron. When you started having your delamination problems, I was really hoping that you just peel those layers back and reset them, but you gave us a finished blade. Congratulations on that. Yeah, we've all been there. Actually, I'm kind of seeing a really neat pattern in that blade. Probably abstract. Yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, actually, it feels good in the hand. Well, Bladesmiths, the judges need some time to make a decision. Thank you. Oh, that was exciting. Yeah. Let's go ahead and start with Chad's blade. Chad's blade, design-wise, there's a lot more comfort in stabbing through and chopping. Yeah, but he looks like he wants to cut something with it already. But then again, because of heat treating last minute there, you've got that potato chip going over there, curved, a lot of meat to work on. Chad could heat up the back spine, straighten that out. He's just got to work careful if he gets to the second round. Let's go ahead and move on to Bert's blade. The execution was close as we've ever seen to flawless in the first round. I love the spine. I love the design of a fin. This is going to be a beautiful blade. Let's move on to Kevin's blade. The pattern, really ambitious. It's a big risk. We have no idea how that pattern lines up with that edge. Kevin might have wrought iron and not have a hardened edge. There's wrought iron on that edge. There's no doubt. Last blade is Aaron's blade, Jay. 
Again, we got the same issue. We don't know if there's hard steel on the edge. You know what I noticed? You picked a piece of metal out of a different railing. Yeah. I wonder what that had to do with it. What about length? From tip to shoulder, we're only at 11 and a half. OK, judges, have you made a decision? Yeah. Let's go tell our Smiths. Blade Smiths, the judges have examined your work, and they have made a decision. Aaron, you did not make the cut. Aaron, today wasn't your day. It was not um, my day. You did charge forward, gave us a hardened blade, but we have delamination on the blade, and you didn't meet the length parameters. Those things combined, we had to let you go. Aaron, please surrender your blade. I'm truly frustrated that it didn't work out for me. It's what I do, and I do it well. I'm a talented, skilled craftsman, and I guess I busted under pressure. All right, bladesmiths, your blades have been tempered, but now it's time to turn them into fully functional weapons by crafting and attaching a handle from the range of materials provided to you. You will have three hours to accomplish this task. You can use that time to address any flaws or issues that were identified in your blades. After the three hours has elapsed, your finished weapons will be tested in chopping and stabbing paint cans and slicing through tatami mats. Good luck, bladesmiths. Your time starts now. My strategy going into round two is just to keep my eye on that clock. I want to give myself no more than an hour to get the blade completely finished ground, not including the handle. If I don't grind this knife down the center, the hard steel core is not going to line up on the edge. It's not going to hold an edge. The edge is going to be very soft, and, and it's going to roll over when they cut something with it. So I need to make sure that that hardened core is lining up right on the cutting edge. He's got a really nice pattern on there, but there is wrought iron coming down to the cutting edge. That's going to cause a problem with the edge retention. I have to make sure I don't have any wrought iron on my edge. That's why I keep going back to the edge. Chad needs to straighten that blade out. If he's going to try and grind it straight, the concern with that is he's going to either end up with a blade that's still got a bend in it or a very thin, delicate blade that's not going to hold up to the testing. I'm a little concerned about my warp. The judges don't think I can fix it. I might be eliminated. I'm very worried about that. He's really removing a lot of metal. Yes, he is, and he's doing it quickly. Yeah. For the handle materials, I'm looking for something that's natural, because I would really like to burn my tang on. I want it to be long, and I want it to be wide enough. Outside bat for this, I really don't care what what it is. So I'm looking around, and then I spot in the back a little axe handle that's sitting there. I'm just going to take this and put that sucker on. He starts off with wanting this elaborate, beautiful design of metal for his blade. Then, with all that being fixed on his blade, we go for a simple kind of material for his handle. Like, where are we going? It may not be the prettiest thing, but it'll work. I wanted to put a metal guard on. And it crossed my mind out. Paracord and super glue. That'll work for me. The fact that Kevin's abandoned his guard is a little worrisome. A little. One hour, bladesmiths. You have one hour remaining. My handle should be pretty easy to make. The plan is to use sandbar stag. In the bottom inch, I'm using a different type of horn. Everything's good to go. Now I just got to put that one little inch of antler on the bottom. Everything's falling into place, just beautiful. And then I go to paint it. Bam! It just cracks and falls all apart. Oh! Broken. There's no saving it. What do we do? That ain't gonna look good. This could be it for me. I could be done. My deer horn handle cracks and falls all apart. Oh! There's no save in it. Chad actually did break his antler. If that antler's not supported underneath, you can get those things to crack. It's a hard material, but it ain't rock solid. Oh, what's the cheap way? 
45 minutes, Blade Smiths. If I don't get this handle done, I could be going home. <laughs> oh my god. I can't help but laugh. I mean, can you see Chad? He's slathering that epoxy all over. I grab some paracord, grab some epoxy, and I just fill in the gap with a bunch of wraps. It won't slide out of my hand. No, it's going to be stuck to it. <laughs> Took some of my grinding powder, threw it on there, and man, it doesn't look too bad. He's just smiling right now. <laughs> it ain't pretty. I'm working on trying to figure out how to put a handle on this thing. There's a curve and a flare to the back end of my handle on the tang, and none of this material is wide enough to actually fit on the knife. I've given myself a few minutes to see if I can figure out a way that's not going to take me forever, where I can basically splice these two pieces together in a way that looks good. I'll grind the handle down skinnier if that doesn't work. <laughs> 20 minutes, Blade Smiths. You have 20 minutes remaining. Another day in the park for me. I get the handle done. I got five minutes left, and I realize I still got to sharpen this knife. We have, we have not somebody. seen this. Bert's actually flipped the belt over so the paper side is out, and he's putting buffing compound on it, and he's using it as a fine strop. If you don't have a leather belt, that's a trick you can do in an emergency. And that'll just put a polished edge on it right at the end. I'm happy because the pattern looks good. I, I'm happy with it. It's unique. No one else has it going on in their blade. But I dipped it into the ferric, got it wiped off as best as I could in the water, and then I went over to grab some Windex, and boom. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Four, three, two, one. Bladesmith, stop working. I wish I had an extra 10 seconds. The only thing I'm anxious about is if you don't stamp out the ferric chloride well enough, it's going to rust your blade. I just hope that ferric chloride really got stamped out. All right, fellow bladesmiths, this is a strength test. What I'm going to do is take each of your blades and do a thrust and downward slice on one paint can, and then a downward chop on the second. Chad, you're up. Let's have some fun. My blade, it doesn't look pretty, but this is for cutting. No problem going through the paint can at all. It's a little awkward. We still got a bit of that warp in there, so getting that thrust in was a little tricky, but it held up. Good job. All right, you're up next. One thing I'm really unsure of on that knife is I just wish that heat treat would have been better, and so I'm a little bit hesitant about that. Very nice, Bert. Punctured nicely. It's a comfortable handle, the good grip on it. I was able to get a good strike on the chop. The edge held up very nicely. Kevin, you're up. Let's cut cans. We don't have a fixed guard, so I'm going to put the blade stops on to protect my fingers from sliding up onto that edge. OK. Ah. All right, Kevin, the blade is not in alignment with the handle. So when I went to thrust into the can, the point wasn't going where it was supposed to. Got a lot of handle here, too. But the blade held up. Good job. Thank you. Now we're going to move on to the sharpness test with Doug. OK, Smiths, I'm going to take your blades, and I'm going to slash through these rolled up tatami mats. If your blade held its edge, it should just cut all the way through. Chad, you're up first. Are you ready? I'm ready. Well, Chad, it's got a good feel to it. Boy, did it just want to go attack this mat right here. Nice slice through it. 
cut cleanly, it will cut. Good job. Thank you. Bert, you're up next. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I've just seen him cut the mat with Chad's knife, and I'm not sure mine can actually be capable of that clean a cut. Well, Bert, this is a very well-balanced blade. It's beautiful, it's sharp. It cuts so cleanly right through. Edge is definitely sharp all the way through. It will cut. Good. OK, Kevin, you're up next. Are you ready? I'm ready. Kevin. It is a sharp blade. It cut all the way through. It's got a good feel and balance to it. Your handle's a little bit thick. But for a sharpness test, it will cut. Good job. Thank you. If I don't make it to the next round, I will be missing out the opportunity to showcase my talent in a different fashion, and I want to do that. Well, Bladesmiths, after two rounds of competition, each of you has turned in a blade that you can be proud of. However, only two of you can advance to the final. Now it's time for one of you to surrender his weapon and leave the forge. The bladesmith leaving the forge is... Bladesmiths, all three of your weapons have been tested. The judges have deliberated, and they've come to a decision. Kevin, I'm sorry. Your blade did not make the cut. Kevin, you went bold with that blade and cheaped out on the handle. The fit of the handle is also awkward, giving the knife an off-balance thrust, which makes it difficult to stab with. And a guard that's made of paracord and glue. Uh, we just couldn't let that go through. Kevin, it's time for you to surrender your weapon. I agree with the judge's decision. If I was in their shoes, I would have made the same decision. I am without a doubt going to keep making knives and keep doing bladesmithing, and I will get to the point where it's my sole occupation. Chad, Bert, congratulations. You've made it to the Forged and Fire final. When you came to this forge, we asked you to use our tools and our equipment to forge a blade of your own design in your signature style. Now we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate an iconic blade from history. Oh, oh, the Chattel. Oh. The Chattel is a blade that originates from Abyssinia, part of ancient Ethiopia. The curve of the Chattel's blade is almost semicircular, similar to the Persian Shamshir, and its sharp double edges make it a highly functional and effective weapon in battle. Its shape was designed for warriors on foot to hook around an enemy shield to strike vital organs and to dismount an enemy from their horse. The Chattel has also been popularized in gaming culture, notably in the mythological Dark Souls gaming series. It must be a lethal working version of that deadly blade. The length of the blade must be between 26 and 29 inches. The depth of the curve must be at least three and a half inches. You will have five days to accomplish this task at your home forges. We have to make an Ethiopian chatel, which I just learned how to pronounce. And over the next five days, apparently, I'll learn how to make one. When those five days are finished, you will return and present your finished chatels to our panel of judges. They will put those weapons through a series of dynamic and rigorous tests. Only when those tests are complete will they declare one of you the Forged and Fire champion and the recipient of $10,000. Good luck, Bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. Good luck. I'm going up against the master Bladesmith. This is what he does. This is his living. I'm just the backyard blacksmith. But the playing field could be even. He's never made a chattel. The first thing I do today is I gotta make Damascus. 
get to the press. First press, looking good. Second press, looking good. Third press. Well, just came right up. It just split like a sandwich. I gotta get control of the situation. I'm excited. This is the part of the competition I was looking forward to. Day one, we're going to design, we're going to make the steel, forge it into a blade. Maybe that would be it. All right, here we go. Making the first fold of the Damascus. It's probably not really quite hot enough to make the fold properly, but I do it anyways, and that sets up this off kilter fold that's got me a little concerned. I think we're going to be okay. Because of this ladder pattern, the blade will have what's referred to as a chatoyancy, which is the illusion of movement when light plays off it in different directions. The hard thing about this is that I'm not going to know how it really feels until I'm like two or three days into this. There's a whole lot I got to do. I got to get the blade bent. Yeah. I got to shape it in the correct form. I want more bent. Tweak all the edges. A little magic in the blade. Dink with that blade till it gets good. Yeah, I gotta get the tip on. I'm grinding it, I'm going up and down, I'm cleaning up the whoa! I see this big old inclusion. So I keep on grinding, keep on grinding. It goes away. Then I see another. <laughs> There's the bubble. Let's see what happens on Mr. Bubble. The inclusion could mean failure of the blade. I don't know. I don't. It's pretty big. I won't know until I totally grind this out, but that inclusion, it could be a crack. I'm a little concerned. I really got to quench this thing to find out if it's going to make it or I've got to go to plan B. Day two, critical moments. Making sure it's forged to shape. Well, this is a shape I've never made before. I cannot get in and just go full speed and bang it out, because by the time I realize there's a problem, it's going to be too late. It's just so dang ungainly balance. Uh, that's a real concern for me. I want that tip to be on the left side of that center line. Not only does it have tip and handle balance issues, but it kind of has this whole like left-right thing because of the way that curve sits. We'll take it out to the grinder and see what happens. I'm going to grind the bevels in, grind the tapers, and then we're going to heat treat it. I think we're good. This is where the magic happens. With quenching, there's more that can go wrong in one tiny span of time than any other part of it. I am good. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I got to get the Chattel heat treated. That way I know plan A is going to work, move forward, or jump to plan B, bang on another blade. Success. I really feel good about my blade. The Damascus work, the quench work, everything just came together beautifully on this blade. Even if I don't win, I'm really proud of this blade. It's awesome. Today's all about the handle. This handle's gonna be built in pieces. They're all gonna fit together as one. <laughs> I'm gonna do something that I think is in the spirit of the original that I like better. The only way I can design it is against my own hand. But I actually paid attention when I shook the judge's hands so that if anybody had Oompa Loompa hands or like King Kong hands, I was going to bear that in mind. All of a sudden, it just occurs to me, what if the blade breaks? I decided to stop and just throw that handle on there and go out and cut something. See what happens. It really cut, had a lot of power in the cut. I mean, it's brutal. It's raw. We laid waste to a couple of small trees. I feel a lot better about finishing this up now. <laughs> Bert, Chad, welcome back to the forge. You've had five days to work on your chattel, so I hope you used your time wisely. Bert, how did it go? 
thought it went really well. It was a huge challenge to make something this different from anything I've ever made. I've made a ladder pattern Damascus blade with an African blackwood handle. I wanted to have a little tie to the history of this sword. I'm really excited to see how it'll do. Great. Chad? That went pretty well. I uh, made a 64 layer Damascus my first try. I knew I had to amp it up. I'm going against him. <laughs> All right. Well, gentlemen, both of your weapons look absolutely fantastic. But how your weapons look is secondary to how they perform in our weapons tests. We will now be testing your weapons in three different trials. Doug? Blade Spits, this is a strength test. The Ethiopian Chattel evolved from a sickle, an agricultural tool that was used to harvest crops and cut plants. To test the strength and function of your blade according to its historic design, I will slash through these vines. Bert, you're up. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm nervous because cutting through that hedge is going to be a, a very fast cutting stroke. And if this thing's too heavy, it doesn't really matter how sharp it is. It's just not going to work. Well, Bert, your edge held up. I don't see any deformations or anything in there. It's got very good balance. I love the feel of your handle. The way you made it, there's a good flare to prevent it from slipping. Cut through the vines easily. And for the strength test, it held up. Good job, sir. Thank you. Chad, you're up. Ready? I'm ready. I'm feeling good. I'm thinking this blade is going to hold up. It's strong. It's sharp. It should hold. The hook gets stuck on the vines. I'm thinking, oh gosh, I went the wrong direction with this blade. Well, Chad, for the strength test, looks like your edge held. No deformations, handle feels good, and as expected with the hook design, it would catch on that. This, sir, is a strong blade. Good job. Thank you. Next test is the kill test. To test the lethality of your blade, I will attack this ballistic dummy. Bert, you're up. You ready? I'm ready. Well, Bert, <laughs> it's a sharp blade to penetrate all the way through, and you slice through the clavicle into the breastbone. Obviously, probably gutted him pretty well. It will kill. Chad, you're up. Are you ready? I'm ready. That really dug into this dummy and they want to let him go. Get a good laceration on the side. This will also kill. Good job, sir. Thank you. Next is the sharpness test. To test the sharpness of the inside edge of your blade, I will take your weapon and I will slash you the slab of meat. Bert, you're up. You ready? Ready. I'm a little concerned because I can't tell looking at that big piece of meat. Does it have ribs in it, or is it just solid meat? I don't know. To test the sharpness of the inside edge of your blade, I will take your weapon, and I will slice through the slab of meat. Bert, you're up. You ready? Ready. This is a very sharp blade. No indentations, no deformations. It will cut. Thank you. 
Chad, it's your turn. You ready? I'm ready. Bert's blade performed perfect on the sharpness test, and that has me nervous. The blade not going through the meat is not making any sense. I know that blade was sharp. Well, Chad, it didn't slice you the way I was hoping it would. The inside edge isn't razor sharp. It did cut through a little bit, but then again, because of your design being a hook, it got caught up on the meat. Bladesmiths, our round through weapons testing is complete. The judges will now take some time to deliberate about your blades. Thank you. I feel really good now that the testing is over. No matter what the judges say, I'm happy with the result because, you know, I, I've accomplished what I wanted to come here for, which was to challenge myself. Bert, Chad, final round of this competition, you were given five days at your home forge to design and fabricate Ethiopian chattels. Jay. Well, oh, Bert, I love the pattern and the steel in your blade. And then with that edge geometry you put on that and the heat treat, you made a very, very effective weapon as well. Thank you. Chad, the Chattel is designed to be a reach-around weapon, and that indeed is a reach-around tool. The curvature of your blade allows it to hook all the way. Well, gentlemen, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. Bert, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Thank you. Chad, your Chattel did not make the cut. Chad, your Chattel was designed to go around a shield and puncture deeply, but it's also that hook that prevented you from making it a very good slashing weapon. Please surrender your Chattel. Chad, thanks Thank so you. much. I've come a long way. My creativity has been awakened, doing things I've never done, and I'm proud of that. Bert, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion, and that title comes with a check for $10,000. Thank you. I won. I won. It's got all the historic aspects that a Chattel should have, but it's really got your signature silent. This taught me that I can do something completely outside my comfort zone, and I can figure it out. Guys, you did it. Kids, you can do it. Take risks.